Hello there, and welcome to Success as a Student, a skills podcast for students and anyone who wants to develop key skills that will help them in being successful. My name is Alexander Wood. I create online skills content for the University of Derby. Outside of work, I'm a trustee, a chairperson of a youth group, and the University of Derby Graduate of the Year. In this series, we focus on how you can develop skills that will help you to succeed in your university study, your career, and in your personal development, all by interviewing experienced University of Derby staff and successful students. In today's episode, we're discussing the useful skill of organisation. Organisation as a skill allows you to be prepared to take opportunities and to be more efficient in the tasks that you do in your everyday lives as a student. Organisation is a very broad skill and so we're going to be discussing advice for different types of organisation including organising your time, organising your research and organising the different projects that you might be working on. We're also going to be discussing how organisation can help your mental health whilst you're studying by reducing stress. And to discuss all of these topics and lots more with me today is Caroline Ball. So hello Caroline, thank you very much for being interviewed for this podcast today. Would you like to briefly introduce yourself to the audience? Yep, okay. So my name is Caroline Ball. Um, I'm one of the academic librarians here at the university um, and I support the College of Business Law and Social Sciences, which means basically I'm the the main point of contact and support in the library for all students um, and all staff uh, on the programmes that come under that college. Yeah, I remember you were actually my academic librarian when I was a student, and so it's really nice for you to be able to be interviewed today. Something you also do in your spare time is I've seen that you've written a few publications, and for those, you've had to organise yourself quite well. When I actually asked you about whether you'd be interested in being interviewed for this, I remember you saying something along the lines of, I'm not actually that organised. <laughs> yes, I... I... It's, it's interesting because organisation is basically at the core of being a librarian, um, mm. you know, sort of organising information, managing information, storing it, retrieving it, um, cataloguing it is, is really the, the, the central kind of, uh, you know, reason for being a librarian to mm. a certain extent. But no, I, I didn't think of myself as an especially organised person in, in my own habits, in my own approaches. Um, but then I, I stopped to think about it a little bit, really. Um, and I I think that being organised is something that other people always think you are and yeah. you never think you are yourself. I, I suspect there are very few people out there who would actually honestly say, yes, yes, I am a very organised person. Definitely. I don't think I'm organised at all when I was thinking about it, but some people say that I am. And it's the same with you and I'm sure lots of other people. Um, and that's something that's really important to get across, I think, and straight away to anyone listening is organisation. You can be organised without knowing it, but also mm-hmm. there are lots of different ways to get organised, aren't there? And so sometimes people will look at the one thing, one way that they might not be or- that organised and say, that means that I'm not organised on the whole. Yeah, I think organisation is one of those things where people compare themselves to other people. Um, and you see the approaches and the techniques that other people use. Um, you look at perhaps the software that other people use. You look at the different kind of styles that people take. And I think it, it can be very common to compare ourselves to other people that we perceive to be organized and think, gosh, they're so organized and I'm not like that. But I think the thing to remember about being organized is that it is basically a coping mechanism. Mm. Um, it is It is your way of coping with your workload, your research, your task list, your routine. And so what works for you um, will not work for someone else. Um, And by the same token, that the kind of things that other people do won't necessarily work for you. I think being organized and being an organized person is something that is very individual. Um, And it's entirely likely that a lot of people listening will probably actually have organization techniques already but they just won't be thinking of them in those terms. It will be the the little things they do to remind themselves, you know, the, the way they organize papers in their room. Um, and you might not think of it as, a, as an organization system, but if it works for you, then it is. Yeah. Even if there is room for improvement, it's still some Absolutely. form of organizational system. I know that when I started getting organized for university, uh, I was actually, for one, I was not very organized at all. And I'm a lot more organised now than I was back then because I've reflected and improved upon it over time. But when I started university four or five years ago, 
I uh, went to an event and I spoke to a third year student. I asked them, what do you think is the most important thing I can develop? And they said to me, I think being organised is the most crucial thing for being at university. So, Caroline, why do you think organisation is important for students? I think it's important because to a certain extent, university is the first time when you are really responsible for your own workload. Um, I think at school, it's it's very much more structured for us. Um, you know, we're given homework. We're told you have to do this tonight. It has to be back in tomorrow. You have parents, you have teachers who are all kind of checking up and making sure that you're doing things um, and really telling you precisely how they're supposed to be done. Um, and I think for most of us, then university is the first time when it's really about us, mm. when there isn't anyone checking up on you, where a lecturer will say, here's your assignment. Um, and they won't necessarily check in every week and say, how are you getting on and what have you done so far? You know, it is very much on you to manage your own workload, manage your own approach, make sure that you're leaving yourself enough time, that you're getting things done um, to the deadline. Um, and that that is a skill that needs to be learned and developed just as much as the studying and the essay writing and the referencing. You know, it, it is something that none of us are necessarily born with. Um, mm. And so university is the first time, really, that we have to do that. Yeah. Um, and it can be a very steep learning curve for some people. Some people are great at it. Some people, you know, really struggle to find their own kind of rhythm and their own approach to it. But that kind of transition between what we're used to at school in terms of all the structure and the guidance and the, the, the timetabling and the routine, you know, you get into your first year at university and it, it's very much more, you know, you're an adult now. It's up to you mm. to figure it out. Um, and that can be quite a jarring transition for a lot of people. Yeah, I think it's, there's definitely a lot of independence at university that there wasn't beforehand. And that can actually help some people as well as also be different for other people. So for me, it definitely helped me be independent because I realised I had to do it. I had to do my work. And there was a, men there was a mental shift for me when I started becoming more organised. Um, but there was also this shift for other people who may not have that support anymore. So I think for me, organisation was really useful as a student because it really helped me to be more efficient and not lose things. I'll get the performance that I wanted without any barriers in the way. So being not organised caused a lot of barriers. So I might have lost a source that I was looking for. I might have mismanaged my time and not had enough time to do things. And actually, the organisation helped with all those things. Would you agree on that point? I would. And I, and I think it probably helps to be disorganised a bit first mm. because it, it can give you an idea of of the frustrations that can then can ensue when you are disorganised. You know, if you do lose some notes that you took and you think oh god I've got to write these again you know if you do forget a deadline um, I think it can it can really stress to you the importance of being organized yeah. and also the kind of areas in which you find that you need organization um, because again everybody is different um, everybody has different strengths different needs you know some people actually might find that they're really good at kind of working to time remembering deadlines making sure that they they you know they might be great at time management but they actually might not be very good at keeping papers organized or keeping mm. track of references so i think it can help sometimes to almost have a bit of a period of winging it um, <laughs> to give yourself an idea actually of where you need that structure where you need that support where you need those routines um, to, to help you make sure that you are kind of keeping to time keeping track of documents making sure that you know what you're doing um, so a, a little bit of failure sometimes yeah. can actually help us be more successful in the long run Something that we've been talking about a lot on this podcast series is about learning from failure, and that is definitely something which is useful for me. I know the importance of storing documents so that I can find them because I've been to lectures and not been able to find my notes or my answers to the tutorial questions and things like that. So by learning from that failure, I could then go, never again, I don't want that to happen. What can I do to make that not happen again? Because that was embarrassing. And so the failures can really can really help you with your organisation. Um and we'll talk later on in the in this episode about reflections and how reflection can be useful. What I'd like to talk a little bit about now is about how students can really develop their organisation. So have you got any tips about the broad skill of organisation that you think would be useful to students listening to this podcast? I think 
recognizing your own strengths and weaknesses is really important um, because there may be areas in which you don't need that much sort of external help or support. There may be areas um, in which you can just kind of wing it. Um, and then there may be other areas where you do need to find a structure. You do need to find a system. Um, for example, I'm very aware that I have a very short attention span. Um, I really struggle to focus on anything for more than about half an hour. Um, so I, I'm the kind of person who likes to dip in and out of doing lots of things rather than kind of sitting down and focusing on something for hours on end. So for me, with like essays, for example, I could never be one of those people who could just kind of, you know, thrash out an essay overnight the night yeah. before it's due in or something like that. I just I, I couldn't do it. I'd be paralyzed mm. because I just couldn't spend that amount of time on it. So I was always very aware that I have this short attention span that I can only really work on something for short periods. So I would have to kind of build that in to my plan of how I'm going to approach this essay. Um, I would have to be aware that I would need to give myself a long kind of lead in time so that I could have the time to just spend half an hour here, 40 minutes there. Um, like, for example, at the moment, I'm, I'm actually doing a postgraduate qualification myself. Mm. So I have an essay that's due in at the start of April, um, which is a month away. Um, but, and I started it about a month ago. So I've given myself like two months, really, to get this essay done, which is loads of time. And some people might not need that. Some people might just need a couple of days to really sit down and, and focus on it. But I know that's not my approach. That's not the way I work. I know that I can only do it in bite sized chunks. So I've given myself enough time to work that way. So I think understanding yourself is really, really important, you know, understanding your own preference, um, understanding the way you like to work, because that will very much have an influence on how you approach being organized, because you'll kind of understand a bit better what you need yourself as opposed to, you know, what people like like me say or, you know, what your peers say, you know, that approach might work for them. It might not work for you because you have a very different approach and you have a very different style. So I think you need to sort of reflect a bit on yourself about what your preference is for studying, for learning, for, for doing assignments, um, because that will very much influence the different kind of approaches that you take. Yeah, definitely adapting how you organize and the organizational methods that we might discuss today or that you might have learned to do yourself. So I know I'm kind of the opposite of you. I could do work in big chunks if I needed to. And I'd often put things off thinking I can do this in one go at the end if needed. But I reflected on that method and said, actually, is that my best work? So I tried now to avoid that and to break the habits of doing it in one go when there's that need to do it and trying to do it early. So I got time to probably reflect on it. So I'm in the opposite end of the spectrum to you. So I'm having to so I'm having to try and make myself do things earlier. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting because we have very different approaches and we're, we're both recognizing that. And therefore, our approaches to how we will manage our time and how we will manage our resources will probably be very different because we're coming at it from kind of different ends. Um, yeah. And I think that's kind of really key to get across about organization is, is, you know, you can listen to all kinds of tips and podcasts and, you know, websites and guides. But you really have to find what works for you. Yeah. Um, because only you understand yourself. Only you really understand what works for you, what you're good at, what you enjoy. Um, and the key really is finding an organization approach that, that meshes with your own personal learning approach. Um, because then once you do, it will, it will be easy. You know, it won't be difficult. It won't be a chore. Um, if you try and follow an approach that someone else does, um, but you know that they have a very different style to you in terms of revising or writing essays or studying, you probably find that their approach isn't going to work for you because you, you're coming at it from a different angle. So it's it's really key to, to understand your own approach, understand what you actually need support with. Where are those areas where you're weak? Um, because that will very much then influence how you choose to approach, you know, becoming an organized person. So a lot of it is about reflecting on yourself to try and work out how you can approach things. I do agree with you. What works for one person doesn't work for another. So what I do wouldn't work for you and vice versa. Um, I think it's actually would be a good time to talk about reflection. So how, Caroline, do you think that reflection comes into organisation and can help organisation? I think particularly at university, but honestly, at every level in life, um, reflection is useful. Um 
you know, we we will never develop as people, as individuals, as employees, as students, if we aren't kind of constantly taking stock of what am I doing? Is it working for me? How is it making me feel? Um, so I think reflection is one of those things that it's useful to try and get into the habit of as early as possible, because it is absolutely something that will stand you in good stead throughout your career. Mm. Um I think at university specifically, it's probably easier because we are getting more frequent feedback um, from people who know what they're talking about. So, you know, your lecturers, your, you know, your student well-being services, your librarians, you know, all of those kind of people are there to, to help you develop, to help you learn, to look at what you've done, to look at how you've been approaching things and, and give you feedback on that. So I think that's something that's really kind of key to bear in mind that reflection is very much something that's internal. It's very much you thinking about yourself and how you approach things. But you do have all these kind of support services around you at university that can help you reflect, that can give you that outside perspective, that can, you know, provide the, the wisdom of their own experience. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's something that's not easy to do. Um, I think reflection is something that can be quite challenging um, because obviously we are looking at not just our strengths but our weaknesses um, and it can be uncomfortable sometimes to reflect and to recognize that there are things that we are just rubbish at <laughs> you know and we've all had that kind of realization where there's something that we thought we were doing really well at and then someone comes along and is like no not so much <laughs> um but it's it's important and it goes back to that that idea about learning through failure um mm -hmm. you know it's important to take all that feedback on board to recognize that how we feel as individuals and how we think we're approaching things is not necessarily how it comes across to others. So, you know, we talked right yeah. at the start of this episode about how I don't think of myself as a, 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 an organized person, but other people look at me and think that I'm organized. You know, you can just as easily flip that and think, I think of myself as an organized person, but other people look at me and go, no, you're really not. <laughs> um, so reflection is is really, really important. But I think also kind of taking advantage of all those support systems and that feedback that's on offer to us at university is really key because you don't tend to get that kind of feedback in in the real world as much yeah you know you'll go into a job you'll you'll have a manager or you'll have a mentor but you know if we talk about independence being really important at university in a lot of roles it's even more important um, and you won't necessarily have that kind of constant structure of, of feedback and guidance and support um, mm. So it's all really key to take advantage of when you're at university because it's the best time to develop those skills. Yeah, so I think uh, getting feedback actually from others about how you what they think about you in terms of organisation can be really crucial. But often the, some of the feedback that you do get in terms of assignments that the people who've marked it don't un always understand your situation in terms of organisation. And so something that we discussed in the reflection episode of this series uh, was all about how you should give yourself feedback uh, in, on things like your organisation, for example, uh, because of the fact that only you know your situation, how you did your assignment, whether you were up till 2am the night before or whether you did what you do and work really early and so on. So in terms of students' organisational methods, when do you think students should self-reflect on how their organisational methods are working? Um, I think it's an ongoing process. Um, I think it can be most obvious... And most obviously helpful, I think, when we have a specific task in mind. Mm. So obviously sort of studying at university, being a student um, is a kind of ongoing, ongoing thing. But there are also periods where we have specific tasks. You know, you have an assignment or you have an exam. Um, and I think they can be particularly useful reflective pieces because you know how well you did in that task. Um, you mm -hmm. know, you know what the outcome was. So you know the the impact that your approach and your organization had on that impact. You know, the rest of the time it can be very ongoing. But, you know, I've got an assignment. It's due in on this day. Um, you know, you will know. Did you have all your references in order? Mm -hmm. You know, you will know how long you actually spent on that essay. You know, you will know. Did you get it submitted several days before the deadline or was it five minutes before that midnight deadline? You know, you, you will have something that you can sort of benchmark yourself against to a certain extent because it is a finite piece of work. So I think those particularly can be really, really useful opportunities for reflection. Yeah. 
you know, you can think about, well, the, the assignment that I had at the start of the semester, oh, I didn't I didn't give myself enough time for that. I, I, I messed up my references. Um, I didn't keep track of some of the articles that I used. You know, I submitted it, you know, like really close to the deadline. Um, you know, I got my Turnitin score back and I didn't have very much time to actually look at it and see what I could yeah. improve in that essay. You know, but then your second assignment you will have had the opportunity to learn from that experience, to think about those things that you maybe did wrong, and you can then fix it. So I think the best time for reflection is really on those opportunities where it is a finite task and you can assess mm. how successful you were in it. Yeah. Actually, you raise a good point there, which is about how you can gain the feedback from one assessment to another. And something that I always found useful is if something didn't work in one assessment, so let's say you didn't organize, organize yourself properly in some respects, you could then try and improve that on the next one. And even if that didn't work for the next one, there's probably going to be an assignment after and so on. You can continually develop your strategies. And I think, I know with me, I'm continually developing how I organize myself, even still now I've graduated and now in a postgraduate course. Do you feel the same? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, there will be areas where you think you've nailed it, where you think you've found the approach that really, really works for you um, in terms of, you know, a particular task or a particular way of doing something. Um, and then there'll be occasions where, you know, you, you think, oh, maybe I'm still not there. Maybe I could be more organized. Um, or, you know, if you're the kind of person that use, likes to use kind of technology to help yourself be organized, there might be a new tool, there might be a new website or a new piece of software that you think, oh, well, this is kind of similar to what I'm using at the moment. I'll give this a try and see if it's any better. Mm. Um, so like for me, for example, I really like to use a, a website called Trello. Um, oh, I love for Trello. <laughs> for keeping organized um, because it's it's very visual which I like um, and, you know and you can add so much kind of information to it in terms of notes to yourself you can upload documents you know you can create kind of different columns for you know things I haven't started yet things that I have started things that I've completed and you can move things from one column to another um, and it's a really really useful tool um, I probably wasn't taking that approach before something like Trello came along mm. um, you know some people might have been taking a similar approach with with kind of writing things down and having columns or you know I um, I used to work with a, a student who used to kind of draw herself on a big a a3 sheet of paper and stick it on the wall um, with different columns for ongoing completed and stick post-it notes on the wall and that that really worked for her mm. um, I could never be bothered with that because I was finding that the post-it notes would fall off the wall and I'd lose them or, or you know, it, it just didn't work for me. But Trello is basically the digital version and it does work for me. Um, and I think that's something that's, that's kind of key to stress about organization as well is some people prefer kind of physical print approaches, you know, mm -hmm. having notebooks, having wall charts, having, you know, essay plans that they've written out by hand. Some people prefer to do it all digital. Um, and it, quite often, you can think, oh, I don't like this approach, but you've only ever tried it, you know, on like paper and pen. And then if you translate it to the digital sphere, like me with Trello, you suddenly think, oh, actually, this really works for me. This is great. Mm. Um, and that version that my friend was using with just the A3 sheet of paper was literally the same approach. But I didn't like it with post-it notes and a piece of paper. And I loved it with Trello. So, you know, kind of recognizing that that it can sometimes not just be about the approach but also the format and the medium um, can make a, a big difference some people are very comfortable with technology so they prefer to look for kind of software for all of these issues mm -hmm. some people are not happy with technology and they much prefer to have you know paper and pen and print out essays and have ring binders and folders um, and so there you've got the same approach just in a different format um, and that's something to bear in mind as well mm. It's actually interesting. I wonder if it's entirely because it's different in terms of it being digital or if it's also because you've changed in terms of your other skills and your mindset potentially has changed in terms of that working for you as well. So there might be other factors at play there. But yeah, I definitely think it's a great point to make in terms of how online software can be useful uh, for helping you with organisation. Something which I'd just like to ask a question of. So you earlier on mentioned that you have an assignment due in April. With that assignment, uh, are you planning on reflecting on your organisation and how you're time managing, for example, during it? Or are you just going to go with your, what your approach is now and see how it goes and then uh, it's, complete? It's interesting because it's been a long time since I've written an essay. So mm. some of the 
some of the kind of organizational approaches that I'm taking are, are kind of coming back to me from my own student days. Um, some of it is new. So the last time I wrote an essay like this was probably, actually, I'm not going to tell you when the last time I wrote, because <laughs> that will make me feel old. Um, it was it was quite a while ago. Let's put it that way. So some of the tools that I've just been talking about here um, didn't exist the mm. last time I wrote an essay, or, or if they did exist, they were in a very rudimentary form. So, you know, when I did my last master's, for example, um, you know, we did have online journal articles, we did have databases, but they were not anywhere near as user friendly as they are now. Mm. Um, so that influenced my approach. So it's interesting for me at the moment, because this is the first one I've written for a long time, how much I'm sort of instinctively going with the same approach that I would have used back then. Mm. But then also thinking at the same time, I don't have to to do it this way because now there are these other tools that are available to me um so with things like referencing for example last time i had to write an essay um i i, I don't know some of those referencing tools like endnote or, or refworks might have been out there but i i didn't have access to them hmm. so i've used it since for things like research for things like journal articles but i've never really used it for an essay yeah. So it's it's an it's a, it is an, an ongoing kind of reflection process for me because I am kind of thinking back to what I did as a student, um, but then also relating it to what I know now as a librarian. Mm. Um, because obviously last time I wrote an essay, I, I wasn't a qualified librarian. I was in the process of becoming one. Um, so it's it's sort of a bit of both, really. Um, yeah. I'm sort of reflecting as I go along and adapting my practice. But I suspect once I've finished the essay, um, I'll also look back and think, yeah, I should I should have done this more. Um, you know, I, I should have focused more on the tools that I know are available now rather than just kind of doing it old school the way I was mm. used to. So it's it's sort of both. I think it's been a it's been an interesting experience for me kind of being a student again and perhaps falling back into some of those bad habits. Yeah. <laughs> is it, is it interesting because I'm thinking about what you're saying in the, in the perspective of fixed and growth mindset and how you could easily just rely on the same techniques that you used about however long ago it was, um, and they would work. They would work, but you take an approach where you're free to fail almost, where you can attempt something and try to use these new technologies because you know that they will help you get better and more efficient than what you could have done a few years ago. And you're actually trying to therefore improve. So rather than saying fixed and saying, I've got a method that works, you're almost taking a small risk but that can help make you get more efficient do better and be more up to date with the times I think that's really great and yeah and I think it's also relating things that work for me in one context and bringing them into another context mm. so as I said it's been a long time since I've written any essays um but I have had occasion where I've had to organize lots of references. I have had occasions where I've had to write pieces of work. So, uh, you know, they were mostly around kind of more formal research and journal articles and book chapters and things, but those principles still apply. Um, so I, I've kind of taken what, what for me has been and very much up till now, really organizational tools that were part of my work. So part of my job, and I'm now relating them back to being a student again. Um, so I think that's a kind of important thing when you are talking about organization is that there may be things that you do, um, you know, for those students who um, have got families, those students who are carers, those students who are, have got jobs. There is an, it's entirely likely that there'll be things that you do as part of those roles um, in terms of making sure that you're doing things on time, in terms of organizing people, um, in terms of organizing schedules. You know, there may be things that you currently do in those kind of roles where actually those skills that you've developed can translate very easily into your own approach as a student. Yeah, I think that's a great point for anyone who's had a gap in between studying and working, which is what we have a lot of advice on and what we have to give a lot of advice to students on and what people struggle with often. So, yeah, I'd like to just now talk about improving specific types of organisation. So just then you mentioned about uh, organising time, for example. And there are a number of different specific types that I'd like to talk about, but the first one is organising time. So do you have any advice for anyone listening about how they can organise how they manage their time? I think the most important thing is to know how much time you've got. Mm. Um, and I think this is a really key thing, particularly I think at the moment when obviously a lot of people are studying from home. 
Um, you know, again, as we said, we have a lot of students who are part time, who who, you know, have jobs. Um, we have people who are carers, who have families that they have to look after. So I think knowing how much time you have actually got is a really key thing to start off with, because, um, you know, someone like me, for example, um, I live alone. I've got a house to myself, so I've got very much more time at my disposal than, you know, someone who is perhaps in a in a shared student flat um, or someone who, you know, is trying to homeschool kids at the same time um, or someone who is trying to fit in studying around a full time or part time job. So knowing how much time you've got is very much going to dictate um, the approach that you take. Um, you know, I have the luxury of wasting time. Um, you know, other people don't. Other people might say, right, I have got a couple of hours where the kids are occupied and, and the, you know, my partner is out and I don't have to worry about checking in on my aged mother and the dog is being quiet and I don't have to go to work today. You know, all of those kind of external pressures that, that impact mm. on us all at the moment with lockdown. Um, you know, you know how much time you've got. So you know how rigorous you need to be and how structured you need to be. Um, you know, as I said, I can I can afford to waste time to a certain extent. If you know you've only got two hours, um, then you've got to be much more focused. Um, and it might be that for someone like that, um, having a plan, you know, thinking about, OK, these are the things that I have got to do. How long mm. do I think each of these is going to take? Have I got enough time to tackle all of them right now? Um, if I haven't got time to tackle all of them, which of these is the priority? Um, and taking that kind of approach, because the amount of time that you've got to hand is is the number one thing that is going to dictate how you use it. I think um, the point that you made about there, about knowing what things to do, I think that's an essential thing in terms of organising time, but also using that time effectively. It's definitely, I found it so much easier when I know what I'm doing to actually then do it. Um, what do you, do you think that in terms of organising a time, people's time that planning time into a calendar could be useful i i think having a routine is hugely important mm. um i think particularly at the moment when the routines that a lot of us have relied on in the past have, have gone um you know those those of us who you know would have gone to work who are now working from home you don't have the same pattern of i get up at this time i drive to work I, i'm at my desk for this time i, I work until lunchtime you know that's a routine um, yeah. And we therefore know how much time I've got, um, you know, when I need to, to do what. Um, so for those um, like students who are listening, who would have also had that kind of routine in that you would have known when your classes were, you know, you would have known when you had to be in, in this lecture room or when you had to get over to B block for a class, you know, you would have had that whole kind of structure. Um, so I think setting yourself a routine is really, really important mm. um, because if you do say, right, you know, 10 till 12 every Tuesday is when I'm going to tidy up my notes. Um, you know, three till five every Thursday is when I'm going to do my wider reading, um, is when I'm going to look at the, some of the stuff that the lecturers have set for us. Um, because you don't currently have that schedule as much as you used to. You know, a lot of classes um, are asynchronous, so you can watch them whenever you want rather than having to be in a specific lecture room at a specific time. Um, and not having a routine, you know, you, you you probably all find, for example, when we go on holiday, we totally forget what day it is. You know, you're like, is it Thursday? Is it Saturday? What's the date? You know, because that routine that you rely on to kind of structure your life just goes out the window on holiday. Mm. Um, and I think to a certain extent, it can be very similar at the moment with studying from home, working from home, you know, not having that structure of the week that we're used to, not having that timetable where we know we've got to be in this classroom and then we've got to be in that lecture hall and then we have two hours before so we can go to the library. Um, so I think creating yourself a routine is is really, really key. Um, and it can help you stay, stay motivated too. Um, mm, and it can help you stay organized because if you do start thinking, oh, I'm not sure about what this lecture is talking about or I didn't quite understand some of the things that, that they were saying, you know, you can look at your own routine and think, well, I've got a couple of hours tomorrow afternoon um, where I've set aside some time for, you know, revision or for, for wider reading so I can focus on it then. Um, because I think not having a structure can leave us feeling a little bit kind of rudderless and a little bit like, oh, what am I going to do today? Um, and, and when you're feeling like that, it's very, very hard to motivate yourself mm. um, and to sort of sit down and, and focus on the things that you know you've got to do. 
So I think creating yourself your own kind of little uni timetable, even if you're at home, um, can really, really help you stay focused. Um, and that's yeah. a kind of key part of organization is, is you know, this, to, to a certain extent, the point of being organized is to help you stay focused and to help you stay motivated. So you know what you've got to do. Um, you know, that's kind of why we do it, to be honest. Yeah, I agree. I think it's actually really important to get into a routine. And I know I've recently been getting into one because I've been revising for my exams that I've just recently had. And that has really helped me. Um, so often, if I didn't have a routine, I'd be struggling to wake up at times in the morning. I'd be staying in bed where it, or procrastinating. But when you've got that routine in place, you can use the time that you have more efficiently. And I think that's important. Something that I've been doing that I think has helped me with organising my time uh, recently, just interesting to hear what you think about this, um, is that the day that in the evening before, I actually write in to my diary that I write what I think I want to be doing the next day. Do you think that'd be useful? Yeah, I think it can. Um, because, you know, if you were at university, for example, you would know what your timetable was for the yeah. next day. You know, you would know, OK, uh, I don't have any classes in the morning, so I can sleep in a little bit if I want to. But I've got to get, you know, the uni bus at, you know, half past one because I've got to be on campus for two. Um, and you you do still have that structure. Um, so I, I think that can help. Um, I think it's it's something that might not work for everyone. Um, you know, I think for some people, one of the key hallmarks of being organized is also being able to be flexible. Um, mm. And that that is definitely something for, for me um, because I have quite a short attention span because I like to dip from one thing to another. Um, I do like to have that kind of flexibility um, in my day. And I think you know, I think one of the things we haven't touched on, but I think is really, really in key, key about organization is that to a certain extent, it's about mental health. Hmm. Um, you know, you, you you use these tools, you use these approaches, you, you think about these things to help you cope. You know, university studying, working, all of those things are stressful at the best of times when you're in the middle of a global pandemic and you're in a, a kind of work environment that you never would have expected to be in. Mm -hmm. like you know sitting in your own living room or you know trying to find a corner of a kitchen table to work on it's stressful it's really really stressful and you know one of the primary reasons for taking a, an organized approach is that it really can help reduce that stress you know mm. if if you know what you've got to do if you've got it planned out if you can tick boxes or move things into the completed column you know it can give you that sense of accomplishment it can give you that sense of order um, it can help you realize that actually you are achieving quite a lot, you know, mm. that you are ticking off these things on your list. Um, and I think it's really, really a, a kind of key, key thing in your arsenal for, for coping with the current situation, for coping with that stress. You know, when you know what you've got to do, you know when you've got to do it, you know how much time you need to devote to it, you know where you've got the resources that you need for it. You know, you've, you've got a battle plan. You know, yeah. you're not just kind of going into something blind because that can be the most stressful thing when you when you look at a situation or you look at a task and you think, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know where to start. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. That is hugely stressful. We've all been there. We've all had that experience. Um, you know, I, I'm occasionally having it with the assignment I've got at the moment where I'm thinking, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and so organization can actually really help us look at what we've what we've got look at the plans that we've made look at the structure that we've taken and think actually you know I, I do know what I'm doing you know I, I have a plan for this I've got this in hand um, and that can have an enormous impact on our mental health so you know for nothing else with with organization you know regardless of your grades and your work and your you know your timetable think about it as being kind to yourself mm. um you know because when you've got this kind of stuff down on paper you can you can kind of shut up that little voice at the back of your head that says you're useless you're rubbish you don't know what you're doing you know you can look at your approach and your organization and say actually this says otherwise this says i do know what i'm doing i think that's a very very good point caroline uh, and i think you made it really well uh, I think, additionally, organisation with flexibility can help so much with your mental health. Uh, I know sometimes when you've planned too much almost and you said, OK, I will do this, ta I will spend, I will be done with this task by this point, And then let's say you're not. If you haven't got that flexibility in your organisation, it can sometimes cause extra stress. So I think flexibility and organisation can definitely help with mental health. Yeah, because... 
I think organization can sometimes be the kind of the, the tipping point between, oh, I'm not really in the mood for this. Um, you know, if you've got a plan and you've got a structure and you've got a routine, you can say, oh, I'm not in the mood for it. But, I'm, you know, it's in my it's in my routine. It's in my diary. I'm going to sit down and get on with it anyway. Um, and then, then when you've done it, when you've completed that task or you've done that bit of studying, you will feel better for it. Mm. But I think the thing to, to ref, you sort of, re, you know, I think the thing to focus on as well is that it shouldn't be a cage. You know, if you're absolutely not feeling it, don't do it. You know, mm. organization shouldn't be something that you're forcing on yourself. Mm. Um, it's 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 a tool to help you cope. But if if the actual organization approaches are stressing you out, then they don't work for you. So stop doing it, um, because, as we said, sort of right at the start, it's all very individual. So if, if you try an organizational technique and, and you find that trying to conform to that approach stresses you out more than not having it, then it's not working. So drop it. Um, and there will be times with all of us where we've set ourselves a task, we've set ourselves a deadline and we just can't do it we just aren't feeling it we're not in the right headspace for mm. it um and i think it's really important to acknowledge that and not beat yourself up about it um because i think sometimes you know sometimes university with the deadlines that we have can almost be more inflexible than work you mm. know you can have a, an essay deadline and you must submit it by this point and and you know you can be a couple of days before the deadline and, and just be thinking I'm really struggling my mental health is suffering I've got so much else going on I just haven't been able to to carve out the time to focus on this now if I went to my line manager and said all of that they would probably say it's okay we'll give you a couple of extra days don't stress yourself out your mental health is really really important it's not urgent um you know, and, and if work can take that approach, you know, there is absolutely no reason why student, you know, studies and assignments can't take that approach as well. And I think, you know, if you are in that situation where all of that organization is not working for you, it's stressing you out, you're really, really struggling. You know, we, we talked earlier about all those kind of forms of support that are available in the yeah. university. Um, you know, being organized is not a, a magic bullet. You know, it isn't something that is automatically going to make everything easy to cope with. Um, mm. And you can be as organized as you like and still sometimes find that you're struggling. Um, and I think when that happens, it's really important not to beat yourself up about it, but mm. to reach out um, to those sources of support. Because, you know, I guarantee, you know, if you're struggling with an essay deadline, if you talk to your module leader, they're probably struggling with workloads themselves. There's probably mm. things that, that they've not been able to do by deadlines that they've had to go to managers and program leaders and talk about. So, you know, we, we talk about organization as a tool to help you, but I think it's okay to recognize those times when nothing helps um, and not beat yourself up about it. Yeah, I definitely recommend if you were considering moving a deadline or asking for that support, go into your personal academic tutor or the module leader just having a discussion with them about the options available uh, because they, there is some flexibility there potentially, so do have a conversation with them. Caroline, just be interested now in just spending a, two, a few minutes just doing some quick fire advice for some of the key different areas that you, people can get organised. So, first of all, what do you think is your quick fire advice for students who want to organise files and research? Use yourself a reference management tool. Um, the university officially supports one called EndNote. Um, I probably shouldn't say this, but I don't like EndNote. Um, I like one called Zotero. Um, yeah. And basically a reference management tool is a piece of software where you can import all of the files, all of the journal references that you've been using. You can then create subfolders and subfiles to organize them. Um, they can also help you with uh, automatically creating bibliographies and reference lists. Um, and there, you know, a lot of them, you can actually upload the files as well. So not just the the, the citation, but mm. actually upload the file. Um, Zotero, the one I like to use, for example, also allows you to highlight and make notes in the PDF. So my kind of quick fire one would be use a reference management tool. Um, you know, have a look at EndNote. It's, it's the one the university supports, um, but also explore some of the free options like Zotero and Mendeley because they're they're a little bit more user friendly. Um, EndNote is really designed for big research, you know, research with a capital R. 
Um, <laughs> Zotero and Mendeley are probably a bit more user friendly for students, but that would be my number one technique. Um, I had to, I wrote a journal article um, end of last year and uh, it used uh, the APA referencing system, which mm. I've never used before. Um, as, as academic librarian for business law and social sciences, I support students with Harvard and Oscola. Um, and when I was at university, I didn't even know there were referencing systems. You know, it was just you were just told to reference and they didn't tell you about what systems were in place and what you were supposed to use. Um, so for me, when I was doing my journal article last year, uh, Zotero was a godsend mm. because it really helped guide me and structure me. And I, I knew that I could just kind of import this stuff into my essay and it would be in the right format. Um, so that would be my number one sort of technique um, would be investigate stuff like reference management tools. Yeah, I definitely would agree with that as well. What you said about EndNote, again, what we had looked about earlier, what works for one might not work for another. So do have a look at all of them and see which one works best for you. Um, because then it might work best for you. You never know. Yep. Um, in terms of file management then, so if you've got a file storage system, would you have any tips for that? Um, I tend to just have lots and lots of folders on my desktop That's of how my I computer. Do as well. <laughs> um, I, I tend to... Uh, you know, like at the moment, I mean, this is probably not the best example, but on, on the desktop on my personal computer at home, I have a folder that is called work stuff um, <laughs> <laughs> to distinguish it from all the personal stuff because I'm, I'm at home on my own computer. So I have this folder called work stuff. Um, and then within that, I have lots of different folders relating to, um, you know, all the different elements of, of my job as an academic librarian. So I have folders for minutes from meetings. I have folders for um, this this postgraduate program that I'm doing at the moment. I have mm. a folder for my essay. I have a folder for some of the teaching that I'm doing. So, yeah, it's probably not the most organized approach. But, you know, like I said, I know what is in which folder. Um, you know, matters. my kind of labeling system is what works for me. Someone else would probably come along and not be able to find anything. But that's not the point. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not organizing a central university cataloging system. This is my own personal approach. So, you know, it, that is the kind of file management system that I take. Um, you know, and it, it works for me. Sometimes I do struggle sometimes to find things and yeah. think, what was I thinking at the time when I saved this? And, you know, there are occasions sometimes where you download stuff and then you don't move it into the right folder and then you can't remember where you put it. But mm. that's why kind of having a digital file management system is really useful because there's always that search box. <laughs> yeah. I know other people just like to use the search function and the search box as an alternative option. But I think the key bit that you said there was it works for you. And mm -hmm. that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if other people look at it and go, this is terrible, I wouldn't organise like this. What matters is it works for you. Okay, okay next quickfire question then. Uh, Organising a project or a plan, do you have any quickfire advice for that? Trello. Use Trello. Um, Trello I absolutely love for um, particularly projects when I'm dealing with other people. Um, because it's very visual. You can, lots of different people can have access to the same kind of Trello board. Um, you can assign tasks to people. So if, if you are working on like a group project, for example, and, and you've kind of yeah. divvied up some of the things you have to do, you can assign tasks to people. So you can very easily go in and see, okay, well, such and such is dealing with this and such and such is dealing with that. And, oh, you know, this person's completed their tasks. So they've moved it into the completed column. So, I think particularly for group projects where your organizational skills have to cover not just yourself, but other people, um, and they're all going to have their own kind of different approaches. Um, using something like Trello, where you can keep track of where people are up to, even if you're not necessarily keeping track of how they're approaching it, you can all kind of go in and go, OK, this is where we're up to. This is what still needs to be done. This person hasn't uploaded their bit. Um, you know, it's it's very easy to kind of keep that overview. Um, because I think one of the key things with working with other people, apart from the fact that it's endlessly frustrating, um, is that they will not approach things the way you do. Mm. Um, you know, they, their, their organization system will be theirs and it will work for them. And you might look at it and think, my God, that's chaotic. <laughs> how, do, how do they know what they're doing? They, they might not know what they're doing, <laughs> um, but it might be actually that they do. They just don't look like it because it's very different to your approach. Mm -hmm. So I think when you are dealing with people, having kind of one central system or platform or, or website that you use to keep track of at least where people are up to um, is really, really helpful because then it's something central. 
that you can all access, that you can all look at um, and all be able to benchmark against one another. Yeah, I think trial is really good. Uh, it can be useful for um, uh, planning an assignment dissertation as well. You can look at all different steps and manage each different part of the process. Something I use Trialo for as well is helping to backwards plan. So working out what steps need to be done at the end and realising that actually that's a bottleneck in the future. And so working in when that needs to be completed by to not hold up the process later down the line. Um, and I've talked about backwards planning on lots of videos on the channel that I'll put in the description of the uh, YouTube version of this podcast. So the final thing that I'd like to ask you about then for the quick fire questions is prioritisation of tasks. So do you have any advice for how students can prioritise what tasks they should do and when? Um, you, you would think this would be the easiest one to answer because it, it would be something around, well, when are the deadlines for all of these things? Yeah. Um, but that's not necessarily always the case um, because you can have something that uh, has a very pressing deadline, for example, but it might be that some of the elements that you need to um, get involved with are, are out of your control. So mm -hmm. if you're working on a group project, for example, it might be that, yes, you need to finish it off, but you can't do this bit without that bit taking place. Um, so I think it's a bit too simplistic to always just focus on what 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 needs to happen soonest. Yeah, um, because sometimes it can be about what resources you have available to you. Um, sometimes it can be about the amount of work that is involved. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it can also be the mindset that you're in. Um, and for me, I, I actually think when I'm dealing with lots of tasks at the moment, um, it, it's what do I feel like doing at the moment mm. that actually tends to govern what I prioritize. Um, because there can be things where I think, you know, I'm, I'm getting frustrated. I've been working on a lot of stuff and I feel like I'm not making a lot of progress. And I can look at my kind of to-do list and think, actually, well, there's a couple of things there that are only going to take five minutes each. So yeah. actually, I'm going to do those things because then I'll feel that sense of accomplishment. I can tick things off my list um, and, and that will make me feel better. Um, yeah. And then when I feel more accomplished and I feel more in control of my workload, I then actually might be in a better frame of mind to go and tackle some of these other things that are a bit more involved, that are a bit more complicated. So I think your own state of mind um, is a really good kind of indication of, of what is a priority, because there's what is a priority to the people who've set you that task. Mm. And there's what is a priority to you in this moment. Um, and I think taking care of yourself and being aware, you know, like we talked earlier with reflection, being aware of your limitations being aware of your own style and your own approach, you you know what you need in any given moment. Um, mm -hmm. And if you are feeling overwhelmed and discouraged, then a few quick wins is what you need right now. Um, so I, I think in terms of priority, it isn't always as straightforward as as this this is due tomorrow, so I've got yeah. to get on with this. It might actually be, well, let me do these little things over here, and then I'm in a better frame of mind to tackle that. Definitely. I think it also links to just being kind to yourself like you mentioned earlier and how organization can help you do that and put you in the right same sense of mind so i think that's the key theme from this is both being using methods that are personal to you and also being kind uh, and the links to organization yeah i mean that that is kind of my number one tip really for for any element of, of university life studying research essay writing referencing all of it is if you're stressed and you're unhappy and you're struggling and you're worrying, you're not going to be producing your best work. Mm. You know, none of us do. You know, none of us work well in those kind of situations. And, you know, recognizing that that you're not just dealing with these issues, you know, in, in a normal circumstance, there's this massive global trauma that is currently going on around us as well that is absolutely having a huge impact on your mental health, whether you're even aware of it or not. So, being kind to yourself and recognizing that some of the things that you may have done in the past that worked for you won't necessarily work in this context anymore mm. because of these issues um, and, and recognizing that you're only going to produce your best work when you're feeling it, when your mm. heart is in it, when you're committed to it, when when you really have that opportunity to get your head down. Um, if you've got stresses, if you've got distractions, if you've got, you know, unhappiness and unheaval, upheaval and and all of this stuff going on around you, that is influencing the way you approach your work. So if you're really, really stressed and you're, you've tried all these tips and techniques and they're not working for you, um, give yourself a break, you know, because pushing yourself and beating yourself up and 
stressing about it is not going to be conducive to producing anything worthwhile. You know, so if you find that you're beating your head against the desk, take a break from the desk, step mm. away from it, come back to it when you're in a better frame of mind. You know, forcing yourself is not going to work for anyone. I think that's some really essential and crucial advice that students should definitely follow. Uh, before I end now, is there anything else that you'd like to add about organisation or anything else? I think don't compare yourself to other people um, is a really kind of key thing. Um, and this this goes for so much in university life. I think it's very easy to to look around us and think you're surrounded by people who know what they're doing, who who have got this. You know, you see it a lot in lectures where, you know, right at the start of, of the academic year, for example, I, I do an induction where I ask everyone to close their eyes um, and then put their hand up if they feel overwhelmed. Um, and then open their eyes. And people are often quite surprised to realise just how many hands are up in that room. I think it's very easy for us all to, to look around us and see our, our kind of colleagues and our, our fellow students and think, I'm the only one who doesn't get this. I'm the only one who's struggling. I'm the only one who doesn't understand the question. I don't understand what the lecturer is talking about. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and I, I guarantee you, I almost 100% guarantee you that everyone is feeling the same, probably including the lecturers. Um, so don't compare yourself to other people because you, you have no idea what's going on in other people's heads. And, you know, nine times out of 10, they're every bit as confused and lost as you are. And they're just probably faking it better. Um, so, you know, don't compare yourself to other people. Don't compare your achievements and your approaches and your tactics and techniques to other people um, because it is so individual. Um, and you know, the, the things that work for one person don't work for another. Um, and you have to find what works for you. Um, and then you will probably find that once you do, um, there will be other people looking at you thinking, God, they've they've really got their stuff together. I don't know how they do it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's a life lesson in general, really, isn't it? Don't don't be comparing yourself to everyone else because, we you know, we're all making it up as we go along at the end of the day. I totally agree with that. It's about how success is personal to you and you shouldn't compare yourself to others. It doesn't matter if you're at university and not getting the top grades because if you want to be at university to pass, well, that's what you should try and do. So, yeah, thank you very much for your time today, Caroline. I really appreciate it. That's quite all right. Happy to do so. So that wraps up the interview with Caroline Ball about organisation. But before we end, I'd like to highlight some of the key points that I'm going to take away from this interview. As with all of the interviews so far in the series, I'm learning lots of new things. And one of the things that I learned today that's brand new to me is the link between organisation and well-being. I remember when, as a student in my second year, I tried to take on lots of different things at once to improve my CV, but without doing much organisation. That meant that in a short period of time, I was really, really stressed, whereas other times, I didn't have much on. So, in my third year, I ended up actually doing quite a bit more, but because of how I organised myself, I was a lot less stressed and so the link that Caroline made today about organisation helping to reduce stress is really important and it's just so true. So do spend time organising yourself. It won't just make you more efficient, organising when done properly will help you to reduce the stresses of university and put you in the optimum position to get the most out of your time. The second key takeaway point from this episode is that anyone can be organised. That includes you. Just because you aren't organised now, or just because you're only slightly organised, that does not mean that you'll fix in that position. You can become organised by trying new things and reflecting, so why not have a go? This point links to two other episodes that came out earlier on in the series, which are all about developing a growth mindset. You may find these useful to watch, so I've put these in the description of the YouTube version of this video that you can find by searching Derby Uni Library on YouTube. The final takeaway point from this interview is to try and find an organisation system that works for you. What others do, however well it may work for them, it might not actually work for you. It may be good to get inspiration from what others do, but put your own twist on it and be a bit creative and use reflection to improve that organisation system to a way that definitely works for you in your own personal ways. If you are interested in learning how to develop a creative mindset, we discussed this on last week's episode of the podcast with Professor Ian Turner. Again, that episode is linked in the description of the YouTube version of this video. In next week's episode, I'm going to be interviewing the University of Derby's Enterprise Manager, Oliver Stonia. We'll be discussing how you can develop your enterprise skills and build a a network of connections that's personal to you. Enterprise is all about learning to create something from just coming up with an initial idea 
making something that's real and is happening. It can apply to creating big projects like making your own business or creating your own society. But it can also apply to smaller ideas like coming up with an event that you want to run. If you are interested in watching this episode, it releases on the 26th of April 2021 at 12pm British Summer Time. This episode was brought to you by the University of Derby Skills Team. Production, episode planning and editing was completed by Alexander Wood. Thanks to Stephen Plant for creating the amazing graphics and for balancing the audio of this episode. Thanks also go to Natalia Kodalavar, Tim Zalstra and Naomi Bowers-Joseph for giving feedback for this episode and the series on the whole. Thank you very much for listening.